Hello friends! My name is Roisin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I'm starting a new vlog today and in this vlog I am doing something that I think is going to be really fun. I am trying to find my new favourite authors. Now in my opinion I can't call anyone a favourite author until I've read at least two books that are not from the same series by them. I don't read a lot of series but that rule was created for Hilary Mantel but I have been reading a lot of books for different experimentations a lot of new to me authors this year and I wanted to try and read some authors that I had already read before and loved the work to see if this author would become potentially one of my new favourites. I've never been particularly good at reading more than one book by an author. I will read one book, love it, and then just move on as if that never happened um, because I get distracted by the new. Um, but I want to give some backlist of authors I love a go. So what I did is I went on my own channel and I looked up my top 10 books of 2020, a video I will leave in the cards above if you're intrigued to see what they were. So as I'm trying to find people to be my new favourite authors, I cannot have read more than one book by this author before. Um, and if it was a debut then I obviously won't be able to read anything else by them because they won't have written anything else, probably. So the first book is The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue uh, which is a book about um, the 1918 flu epidemic in Ireland over the course of three days in a maternity hospital and I really really love that. So as that was my first Emma Donoghue I'm now going to read The Wonder by Emma Donoghue um, as to see if she is my new favourite author. This is a historical fiction set in an Irish village where a girl has stopped eating and this English nurse or at least yeah this English nurse is coming to see if it is true that she is surviving without any food. 11-year-old um, Anna O'Donnell or if she is somehow faking if there's some sort of fraudulency going on. Um, she thinks it's definitely a hoax because she's quite sceptical. As she gets to know the girl she becomes more and more unsure, wonders if perhaps something more sinister is unfolding. So historical fiction, creepy and dark, definitely right up my street. Hopefully I'll love this one too. Then I also read, then second on my list was The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett and so I'm going to read The Mothers by Britt Bennett. This one I know is again very very popular on booktube so I'm looking forward to reading it for that reason. This is about a small church community in Southern California and it centres around this one girl who um, whose mother had committed suicide and she is in mourning for her and in her last uh, year of high school she gets involved with this slightly older boy who is a uh, the son of the minister in her church um, and the results of this relationship kind of echo through the community and the things that get covered up, the secrets that happen as a result of this um, are slowly unravel the tight-knit community. So it's a story of scandal um, and what I love about Britt Bennett is her tightly woven characters so I think that there will be a lot of great character work in this one too. And then I read Queenie by Candice Carty Williams is also on my list but I believe that was a debut and there is not anything else I to read from Candice Carty Williams. I also read and loved Summer Light and Then Comes the Night by Jon Kalman Stephenson and so I'm also going to read his book Fish Have No Feet. Um, I think this is it was between this and a trilogy I think that he's written but I think this is a standalone and so I decided to go with this one. This one is set in Keflavik which may be the darkest place in Iceland surrounded by black lava fields and hemmed in by a sea that cannot be fished um, and it is about this one guy Ari who comes back from Copenhagen um, to revisit the place he grew up um, and the one girl that he could never forget and then we also flash back to his grandparents in uh, early 20th century Iceland. Uh, a livelihood drawn from the sea is their destiny. So as you may know I love books set in small isolated communities and I loved Jan Kalman Stephenson's kind of weird offbeat humour, um, his very strange characters. I feel like the, the summer light and then comes the night was really only certain people were going to love that book but I was one of those people so hopefully I will love the rest of his writing as well. Uh, I also read The Girl with the Loud Voice by Ebby Dore but again I think that was a debut. Of course I'm looking forward to all of them, that's one of the great things about this video as opposed to like reading the best-selling historical fiction of last year is that I already know I like these writers so hopefully I like all of their work. So then we also have Mr Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo. However, I have already got read Hover. I have already read Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo and I didn't love Girl, Woman, Other unlike everybody else on the planet apparently. Um, but so she's not really suitable for this video because I have already read more than one of her works. I also had The Mercies by Kieran Melwood Hargrave. Now, The Mercies was Kieran Melwood Hargrave's first uh, debut adult novel. Um, she had everything else she's written has been YA or for children. And I don't really read YA, so I considered not including Kieran Melwood Hargrave because um, 
because of that reason because there it was her debut adult novel but if you've been watching my channel for a while you will know that I have recently discovered an interest in and a desire to get to know more middle grade kind of fantasy novels and so um, as Kieran Millwood Hargrave has written middle grade novels I'm going to read The Girl of Ink and Stars by her and hopefully this will fill my hole for some sort of fill my hole <laughs> Hopefully this will fill the hole in my reading heart for um, some, some sort of cosy, atmospheric, fantastical, whimsical, middle grade fiction. <laughs> Forbidden to leave her island, Isabella dreams of the faraway lands her father once mapped. When her best friend disappears, she's determined to be part of the search party. Guided by an ancient map and her knowledge of the stars, Isabella navigates the island's dangerous forgotten territories. But beneath the dry rivers and dead forests, a fiery mist is a fiery myth is stirring from its sleep. Uh, now, my top one, uh, my top two were "Bring Up the Bodies" and "The Mirror and the Light" by Hilary Mantel. Uh, and I did say that I had to have read something other than the series. But earlier this year, when I was reading the UK's favourite historical fiction, a vlog I will leave in the cards above, I read um, "A Place of Greater Safety." So, I, Hilary Mantel, uh, I think, is already cemented as one of my favourite authors, and doesn't I don't need to include her in this list. But what I put at number two was "Heavy" by K. C. Um, which was a memoir. And I am not a huge memoir reader. I know memoirs are quite popular, at least among the people that I watch on BookTube. Um, but they're never something that I've really dived into. Um, but I do want to. And K. C. Lehman's writing was so incredibly powerful and so well done. So the form and the the um, strictness of like the sentences the what on a sentence level but also the way that the whole thing was structured brilliant um so I'm going to read his collection of essays he does also have a novel um but I'm not sure it's come out in the UK yet um but anyway I'm going to read how to slowly kill yourself and others in America and it's a good job this one's quite short uh, because I definitely have my work cut out with me with how many books I'm trying to read for this vlog uh, this has been uh, blurbed by Renée Edo Lodge and Roxane Gay, so I know there is a lot of love for this book. It is a collection of personal essays. Lehman's attempt to deal with many issues occupying America today, from race, identity and writing, to music, celebrity and violence. Through letters between his own disparate family members, pleased performers whose voices will never be heard again, analysis of the growing culture of fear in the media, and accounts of his clashes with an education system that has both advanced and failed the generation he grew up in. I'm very excited to read some more of Layman's work, and I think that this is going to be just as beautifully written. Uh, hopefully this will be a vlog where I just love everything I read because I already have loved something by all of these authors so I'm excited to get going and I will lead you to the next clip. Hello uh, so it's the first of August <sighs> sorry so I'm sorry about the handheld I know that I'm quite bad at handheld and everything gets really shaky um, but I'm on day six of a migraine today um, so <laughs> I'm feeling better than I was before actually quite a lot better but um, I'm just not I just can't be bothered to get up so this is what you're gonna have to deal with so I'm about a third of the way through The Mothers by Britt Bennett um I actually need to finish it today because I have a book club this evening where we read The Mothers um <laughs> so I'm gonna have to get back to that and read a lot I'm enjoying it so far it seems to be about this church in California and about these the relationships between these women in this church so near wildfires like where there's wildfires i guess so northern california and that um it's never been burnt and mm, i'm getting kind of foreshadowing vibes for that and if if that is right it's quite heavy-handed like this was in the first 10 percent, so i don't think i'm spoiling anything that's because i don't know if it actually happens or not and i won't tell you if i do know but i do feel like potentially it's a bit heavy-handed um but then also so it's about there's this one girl nicola i think was that her name naomi oh i'm just sorry my brain is not like at full capacity today but there's this one girl whose mother committed suicide and then there's this um, and she was kind of the main character and she has an abortion right at the beginning of the book as well so far i don't really know how to describe the plot because i feel like it's one of those books without a lot of plot it's much more about character it's very character focused i feel like the vanishing half was also pretty character focused but from what i'm reading so far it had more plot to it and i'm not hating that i do feel like some of the similes are a little again he heavy-handed on the nose um I'm not a huge fan of simile anyway, I would rather you use a metaphor, but I feel like, yeah, I can't remember because I thought when I heard it, because I'm listening to the audiobook, oh, I need to remember to tell them this on the vlog because I don't like it. And then obviously I've completely forgotten what it is, but I remember that I didn't like the similes, some of them. They're just a bit heavy handed. Um, it also has sections told from the perspective of all of these older women in the church who like pray for 
other people in the church like they get requests to pray for them and i kind of i like that i like that kind of greek chorus these outsiders um watching the what is happening on stage um which makes me feel like this might be a tragedy <laughs> because that's well there was a chorus in the comedies as well so but it doesn't feel like a comedy to be fair we've already had suicide and sexual abuse so trigger warnings for those things um so yeah i feel like this might be a tragedy where everyone ends up dead or most people end up dead um <laughs> purely because of the use of the greek chorus from tragedy um but so far it is well written and, and compelling and i want to keep reading it's very readable um which is again what i thought of the vanishing half but it's not better than the vanishing half yet um and the vanishing half i gave four stars um when i read it last year i no longer give stars because i feel like it's so arbitrary and random and i don't like it um but i do give stars on on story graph just because i want the stats at the end of the year <laughs> which doesn't make a huge amount of sense but it's kind of a rough i give stars as to generally how much i enjoyed it but i don't feel like they're very helpful in terms of reviewing anyway um all of that's a bit of a nonsense but yeah i'm gonna try and finish that today so i'll probably come back to you later hello so i haven't spoken to you <laughs> in a while um because i've been doing various other things uh one of which included getting very very minor <laughs> surgery uh yeah i had surgery this week uh, dermatology surgery so um it was only local anaesthetic um i'm fine um but so oh my god i'm so tired though anyway um, i'm going to talk about it now um but if because i love body stuff i love weird body stuff i'm really fascinated and if anyone else had something like this going on i would love to hear about it but i know that some people might not be comfortable with that so if you don't want to hear i'm just going to say the word growth i had a growth and if you don't want to hear anything else about that skip to this time point um otherwise i am going to tell you now about my growth uh, so I had this thing called a pyogenic granuloma, or at least that's what they assume I've got, um, and it had to be removed, they had to cut it off. So this is what that granuloma looked like, um, and it's basically a growth with a lot of like blood vessels in it, so whenever you whack it, it starts bleeding. And so whenever I whacked it, it would bleed, so that's why it has to come off. Um, so I went to the dermatologist, the dermatology surgeon, and he removed it. Uh, so I've had eight stitches, and now I have the scar. I'm going to show you the scar as well <laughs> this is what the scar looks like uh or at least this is what the stitches look like it will become a scar in the future um it's only two days post op now so very very small operation but that's part of the reason i haven't talked to you for a week anyway i have finished the mothers by Britt bennett now I really don't know how i feel about it i feel very conflicted and kind of confused about this book um hmm. i think that Britt bennett does an excellent job of creating characters and i think that the thought patterns, the thought processes um, of all of her characters were really understandable. She really brought the characters to life. They felt very real. Uh, the setting of this Southern Californian church town, of this small town, insular, with everyone judging everyone, I thought that was really done, well done. I thought that the Greek chorus of church mothers um, coming in and judging and like s explaining everything, talking about scandal in the small town, I thought that that was well done. I enjoyed that aspect of it. Two things, however, bothered me. One is the writing, which for the most part was very um, accomplished, but she used similes so much and I... Th okay, I'm gonna have to go and find out what's going on downstairs. It's just my neighbour in his home gym, um, which is kind of in a lean-to outside of the house, which leans onto our conservatory, um, which means that there's no, no actual walls <laughs> between his gym and our house, so I can hear him picking up and putting down weights and punching a punch bro quite annoying but he probably hears me singing all the time so don't really have a leg to stand on there anyway <laughs> she uses similes all the time and i've realized that that is what i mean when i talk about clunky writing is the overuse of one literary type uh, literary <laughs> device the overuse of one literary device um and i also think that similes often lean into that thing that i've talked about before on my channel of over explaining um and of giving your not giving your right readers credit that they will understand something else that she does is not give her readers credit so she said something there was a passage in it about how when her father had first come back from being overseas he was in the army um that she cried calling him daddy but um and all this explanation of what daddy means and why she wanted to call him daddy and then she was like but it turned out that dad was a better word for him she should have just left it there but she was like no <laughs> she was like uh, but dad was a better word for him a short concise word with some added distance and i was like please you don't need to overwrite to that extent you can like 
pull it back and just say dad was the right word for him and realize what is missing in this relationship without you over explaining absolutely everything um and then the other thing was that it's funny um i just watched a video from emma by, from drinking by my shelf talking about this book talking about abortion which is the major one of the major themes of this book as well as mothers and mothering and what it means to be a mother abortion is one of the major themes because the main character Nadia has an abortion at the beginning of the book and that kind of sets off all the other events now Emma said that Britt Bennett said that <laughs> she didn't think that either of the narratives that she usually hears about abortion that it's the worst thing in the world and you're going to hell or that it's nothing no big deal seemed real and she wanted to write something else and I think that that's a uh, acceptable goal I don't know if acceptable is not the word I mean but it's a a fine goal it's a fine thing to want to write more about because yes whilst abortion shouldn't I don't think should ever be seen as the most evil thing in the world I also um know that for some people it has a real emotional impact and um it's more than just like any other medical procedure I do think that this book leaned a little harder into pro-life than I would particularly prefer um now I understand that this is talking from a small uh, church community perspective um, so I can understand why individual characters have the beliefs that they have but there was no characters absolutely no characters and it was never said in this book that it was okay that it was fine that, that Nadia made that decision that that was the decision that was best for her and it was absolutely fine that she made that decision every single character didn't said something negative said every single character who talked about the abortion it was a horrible terrible thing that she did um, and narratively all of the characters involved in paying for having the abortion getting pregnant in the first place narratively they were all punished all of these characters came out bad things happened to them after the abortion because of the abortion uh in relation to the abortion all of them were punished because of the abortion and were morally great characters um which is fine i everyone's a morally great character um and i think that that is true but Rennett does make all of the characters morally gray there are no real like heroes in this book which is good but i feel like there should have been someone who said it was okay who said that it was fine that she got an abortion um who comforted her because this is a girl whose mother committed suicide when she was 17 she's never she never really got any support at all throughout the novel and maybe that's the point um that Brett bennett was trying to make but making it through abortion it all of the <laughs> abortion was played in a really negative light and maybe not as if you're the worst person in the world for having an abortion but even Nadia never realized her herself maybe she was not getting any support but she should have potentially realized herself that it was fine that she got an abortion it was okay I just feel like there was it leaned closer to pro-life than pro-choice this book and um I'm not sure I really am on board with that well I'm definitely not on board with the pro-life stuff but I'm not sure that I'm on board with the way this book talked about abortion <laughs> So, um, <laughs> probably going to avoid the two uh, harder hitting books for now. Hang on. So, I'm going to be choosing between one of these next, and I'll get back to you when I've read a little bit of them. Hello, um, my tripod is next door, and I can't be bothered to get it, so you are low down. Um, so, it's an unflattering angle, but you can see me, so that's the most important thing. I have now started Fish Have No Feet by Jan Kalman Stefansson, which is the book about a family in Iceland over the course of a century, and um, The Girl of Incan stars by Kieran Melwood Hargrave, which is kind of a fantasy middle grade. Um, so I started with this one. Uh, I read it very quickly, the first 20%, um, which is to be expected as it's a children's book. And, you know, there's like illustrations around the edges of the pages and things like that. So it's a, an easy read. I'm not loving it yet um something like I don't know there's there's I don't like world building like I don't care too much for world building and I feel like there's some of that in here like there's been this sort of epic issue um epic there's a big problem basically there's this world that's clearly not a very nice world because there's this governor and he's stopping them from doing anything and um something terrible has happened that means everyone's instantly been put under curfew and there's been a child who's been killed um and it's just not my style like so far um the writing itself feels a little like i'm being talked down to which i really don't like in middle grade um it, it 
maybe would work for children who wouldn't notice that but it feels a bit like someone's going well children rather than just telling me a story with as much whimsy as I have enjoyed in other middle grade novels um so so far I'm not loving the writing of this and then also everything's quite action-packed straight away um and I prefer not well building but world exploration I think is my preference like I don't really care about how the world came to be the way that it is I don't care about the political setup of the world but I like seeing aspects of the magic in the world and seeing so the sort of whimsical magical things like in the fairyland books or in Howl's Moving Castle things that are magical and whimsical there are funny aspects of those things or dark aspects or just beautifully described aspects this feels like it's lacking in description which is what I like um and also too like political and like adventurous and plot heavy like we've got straight into a plot from the get-go and I just am not that interested in the plot um so so far this is not living up to me but I will keep reading until at least halfway maybe I'll keep reading for a bit and see if I potentially want to DNF this one because I'm just not sure it's my kind of middle grade which is unfortunate because I loved Kieran Millwood Hargrove's writing so much in The Mercies. There was so much atmosphere and I feel like that's completely missing from this. But it is two completely different styles of writing because one is historical literary fiction for adults and one is fantasy middle grade. So it's not going to be the same. But um, she, I know she can do beautiful descriptions. So the fact that it's missing is kind of annoying. Fish Have No Feet by Jan Kalman Stephenson. Um, is very different as in I, there's been nothing plotty happen yet um uh which is fine by me um I am having a little trouble getting into it I know that when I read um Summer Light and Then Comes the Night it was very strangely written but I felt into it straight away there was a lot of like whimsy in that I feel like there's not in this so much but there is a good amount of atmosphere the atmosphere that was missing from um Kieran Millwood Hargrave I feel like that's still going and the style of writing is still beautiful there are some footnotes in this which I believe probably aren't uh Stephenson's writing I believe that they are for people who aren't Icelandic to like give some extra um background on like fishing quotas and stuff in Iceland I'd rather they weren't there um I think I can infer from context what's going on I don't need those little bits of information um maybe put them at the back rather than at the bottom of the page because I find them distracting um but that's more to do with the publication in the UK rather than the actual book itself um his characters are still mm, written in a very different way they're not like it's not like super deep connected with characters but it is kind of exploring ideas about humanity or at least that's what it was in the other one um so yeah i'm kind of enjoying it i am kind of i think i like it and there are moments that are really beautifully described but i am struggling a little bit um to get into it and i don't know if that's because like my brain's not properly in such a lyrical um such a like offbeat surreal literary place uh, at the moment but hopefully i will enjoy it more as we get more into the story because i've only read this much so there's still a lot more to get into and i will get back to you when i've got into it a bit more hello so i have officially dnf'd the girl of ink and stars um and i also started to listen to the audiobook for the island at the end of everything by kieran millwood hargrave to see if a different one of her books would be more my style but she just doesn't write the kind of um middle grade that I like um there's a lot of like angst and a lot of serious things going on like the other one I was listening to was about a uh, leprosy colony and um the segregating people who were sick and well and I want whimsy and I want magic in my middle grade I don't need to read serious things I read serious things in my adult fiction um and so I'm kind of just not really interested in reading more serious middle grade so here in Melbourne Hargrave I think whilst I will read more of her um adult fiction when she comes out with it her middle grade is just not for me unfortunately so that means i'm just gonna continue reading with the rest of them but um this first this is the second one i've read and it is a fail unfortunately can you hear those noisy boys being noisy possibly not they're like zooming around on I'm not sure what but something zoomy um so hello i'm in bed um the knee that I showed you earlier is now infected, which is brilliant. Um, so my leg is in the air and I'm lying down. Um, but I am, 
I am halfway through this book now and um, I don't think I'm going to like it as much as I liked Summer Light and Then Comes the Night, um, the other book that I read by Stephenson. Um, it is a lot more like melodramatic. Um, it's very much focused on one guy. They're, this said it was going to have a lot of historical like in the past stuff, but there's not really that much. Um, it is talking about like small communities in Iceland, dark places where there's like talks about like the financial situation in Iceland the political situation in Iceland and how that leaves people behind um the same neoliberal story we've heard a million times before but it is interesting from an Icelandic perspective so and it's still beautifully written it is beautifully written and it still has the kind of like weird off-kilter humor but it's not pushed to the same extent as it was in Summer Light um it doesn't have the same surrealism it also doesn't have any of the like whimsy and lightness of that it is much more melancholy slow move well I think the other one was slow moving as well and, like nothing happened in it but this one doesn't have the humour and the whimsy of that it's very much more like focused in on this guy's story on his like disconnection from his family uh existential crisis um midlife crisis yeah he's basically going through a midlife crisis um there was a weird moment where his ex-wife got him strip searched by his cousin who was the airport security guy very strange um but <sighs> um most of it i still am enjoying the beautiful writing but yeah it's definitely more melancholy and less whimsical which seems to be a theme of this vlog actually like the kieran millwood hargrave was not whimsical as much as i like my m middle grade the other book that i have started but is in the other room so i'm not going to grab it now is how to slowly kill yourself and others in america by casey layman um i am enjoying it it's a collection of essays i've only read the first two and the introduction um so there's still a lot more to go that's about a third of the way through it um again he's still an excellent writer but i again think that i preferred heavy um heavy w w allowed us to get like a lot deeper he was a lot more vulnerable in heavy than he's being in this book he's still being vulnerable but he's kind of talking about different sections of his life um and i think that the way that heavy was a memoir so it was all of his life and we could see the links and the connections and things circling back around which is what i found really powerful about his writing was how he connected everything and the thematic overview and also the vulnerability and i feel like this is kind of almost like a precursor to heavy like notes for heavy but it is interesting he's going into a bit more of his family like in heavy was his grandma and his mum were a big part of that but he didn't talk about like his uncles in this one and his aunts and stuff um which is interesting and he is still a really good writer like it is still really compelling writing i also think like the way that he linked his life to um like this is about how to slowly kill yourself and others in america it's about racism in america and poverty um and but I feel like it, his um, heavy was a bit more political um, and I liked that from it. Um, but I have only just begun, so I will continue to read. But potentially it's just that I prefer memoir to collections of essays that are not, that are personal essays rather than being academic essays. Like I love an academic essay, but this is more a personal essay. So he is an academic, I'm like a great writer. I'm not saying it's like not rigorous enough or whatever. It's just might be that my preference in terms of personal stuff is longer form. I don't know because I'm not someone who's hugely experienced with personal essay or memoir so that's something I'd need to work out for myself but I'm going to try and read as much of both of these today as possible because I was hoping to finish this vlog tomorrow and there's still the wonder to read um I'm off tomorrow and as my knee is infected I'm probably going to be lying down for most of the time so um we'll see but I'll talk to you later yeah peace oh I really under misjudged how tall this needs to be Hang on. Um, I was supposed to finish this vlog today, uh, yesterday. I was supposed to finish this vlog yesterday. Um, I haven't finished reading all the books. I think I've been biting off more than I can chew because today is the start of the Women in Translation Readathon, but I'm going to start that tomorrow instead. I finished Fish Have No Feet by Jon Kalman Stephenson. And it's one of those books that I feel like I'm going to need to sit with for a bit, uh, maybe read some reviews, have a think about, to see how I really feel about it. Um, it was exploring some interesting ideas and I thought the writing was beautiful although occasionally a little on the nose um not very often but I hate a rhetorical question in fiction just leave me alone right uh, I also think I was kind of missold miss -sold this because it talks to the back about it being spanning one century which it does um but made it feel like it was going to be more historical and the stuff it's like three generations within this family and multiple different characters from different generations sort of interspersed not randomly but thematically rather than chronologically a really interesting form uh which i enjoyed um but the actual historical time periods like the 
the 60s and 70s bit and the earlier bit which is never given an actual date it just says past um is not the history the historical time period is not really part of it to a great extent there are, there are mentions of some events that happen but like actual feeling like you're in the historical time period that's not what this book is about the culture of iceland uh and also of neoliberalism um it's talking about masculinity a lot this book is quite a lot about masculinity most of the characters whose perspectives we get are ma men but we we do get some women's perspectives too we kind of see how the culture of iceland and the financial situation of iceland um neoliberal economics etc um strips towns of their culture and of their like the town keflavik where this is set uh they've lost their fishing rights because they've been sold by big companies but it talks about like what it is to be a man and how the ideas of what it is to be a man both from icelandic culture and from this sort of individualistic uh striving for profit cult uh financial system is driving men toward uh towards feelings of isolation feelings of loss feelings of feelings of isolation and loss and um lack of motivation and depression but also how this plays out for women and how this this the trapped thing the way women historically were trapped in certain situations and the way that still plays out today um there is talk of sexual violence in here which i actually thought was quite well done because when it first happened it was shown from the perspective of the main character um and i was like i know that that was rape but it's not been said and then the way that it's dealt with i think it's done well um and the the ignorance the unable to see outside of your own perspective um the limited p perspective i thought yeah i thought it was really interesting the way that it talked about those things um the other thing that i did notice actually that connects this to summer light and then comes the night is that this is n narrated the uh, this has an unnamed narrator who we know is related to our main character ari because they have the same cousins we never see them we never feel uh, know their name we never see them outside of their interactions with ari um so we never really know much about their story or who they are um which i in summer light and then comes the night um it's told from an unnamed we so there's a we perspective telling you the stories of all the people in this village in iceland um and they're never made clear who they are either so that's clearly a thing he likes um so yeah i didn't enjoy this as much as summer light and then comes the night i think it didn't have as much whimsy and light like summer light and then comes the night was quite dark and weird and surreal um Summerlight is actually older than this. It, it was only published last year, the translation into English, but Summerlight was 2005 and this was 2013, I think. So this one feels a lot more melancholy and slow moving. The other one was slow moving too, but yeah, this one's a lot more melancholy, a lot more um, dark, which is interesting because Keflavik is the like darkest place in Iceland with a volcano and black sands and black rock and all that, which is, I guess, part of the point. But I think that I would like to read more of uh, Stefansson's work. I know there's a trilogy, which is, again, I think this time actually historical fiction, um, but I didn't want to get into a trilogy just in case um, on this, because I feel like I, I wanted to give it a standalone a chance, but yeah. And then I've also begun The Wonder by Emma Donoghue. Um, again, I'm enjoying it. It is um, about a girl in Ireland who has stopped eating and this English nurse who has gone to find out what she's doing. and the two main criticisms I would have so far is that her scepticism is a little over the top and on the nose. Like, we know she doesn't believe it. You don't need to tell me every single time. And her anti-Irish sentiment is also a little over the top and on the nose. Like, I know that there was a lot of propaganda about Irish people being lazy and feckless and bad parents and unhygienic and all that. Um, but the amount that our main character here hates the Irish. I've also discovered what time period it is. It's the 1860s. So we are five years after the hunger. Um, the the great hunger the great famine the potato famine um whatever you want to call it so uh there is a lot about hunger and i'm i'm imagining that our main character is coming is going to discover the limits of her understanding of ireland um because i think that that's what the theme is going to be i think uh i just purely because of how strong the anti-irish sentiment is and the, how much she thinks she knows better than everyone else she's clearly going to get her comeuppance like she couldn't believe she believed that she must know better than a nun turns out the nun had been nursing for far longer than she had um so uh, yeah i feel like she's gonna get her comeuppance but so far the writing style feels a little more simplistic than pull of the stars um i'm engaged but it does feel like an easy read uh so 
I will continue to read this and hopefully enjoy it but yeah it doesn't have it's not pulling at my heart the same way that the pull of the stars did um I have also read more of uh, how to slowly kill yourself and others in America but this one is so short that I'll probably just get back to you when I finished it and let you know what I think hello I'm coming to you very late because in fact this video was supposed to be up yesterday and I'm only filming the wrap-up now um but I was quite unwell yesterday it wasn't covid I took a test but and I'm feeling much better today um but yeah yesterday I was just we went out for a pub lunch and then afterwards I got home and I just went straight to sleep um because I was just feeling so rough but I finished How to Slowly Kill Yourself in America and The Wonder by Emma Donoghue so we're going to talk through these How to Slowly Kill Yourself in America um I think that if I'd read this before Heavy I might have liked it more but having read it after Heavy maybe my expectations were too high um because now I feel like if I read this first I wouldn't have been that keen to pick up Heavy but I don't know if that's because it's coloured by how much I loved Heavy um the writing is still great K.S. Lehman really knows how to write a sentence and he really knows how to put things together um he uses things like repetition almost poetically um and this one was much more pop culture focused there was a lot of pop culture in here um talking about like the death of michael jackson and bernie mac and talking about rap and um southern rappers things like that so this was a lot more pop culture focused than heavy was which i think means that it wasn't necessarily written for me which is fine it doesn't have to be written for me um but it was very americentric um i which again makes sense because it's about america and kise is an american writer and like it literally says on the front there is an american flag like it is about america um so that that makes sense it just doesn't necessarily work for me as well when everything's so american focused uh i can't i i think things either have to be really specific or more universal for them to work for me personally um again as i said earlier in this vlog i am not sure if i prefer personal things to be in longer form and maybe that's why i liked the memoir more but this just didn't hit me the way that heavy hit me um it just i don't know if it's because it's so short but it just doesn't feel so it just isn't i don't think it's going to stick with me in the way heavy does although this was really uh this was more funny i would say than heavy was there was humor in here as well and he does a very good job of like skewering everyone he really understands human behavior um but yeah not as good as heavy i feel like the theme of this vlog is not as good as the book that i loved last year um because that is also true of the wonder by emma donoghue this book is very very readable um and it's quite plotty um despite being mostly about a girl who's not eating there is a lot that goes on a lot that happens there was a romance in here that i kind of was rooting for but also kind of felt a little obvious and a bit unnecessary um so i i was a bit unsure about that i also felt like as i said earlier a lot of the like ignorance of the uh main character the english nurse ignorance about ireland and cultural practices anti anti-catholic sentiment anti-irish sentiment uh whilst it is obviously real from a historical perspective felt a little heavy-handed and on the nose um and like her realizations um oh i was blinkered by prejudice again felt a little too on the nose for me um i did enjoy the story but the ending again felt a little um far-fetched and a little much um so whilst i still like emma donoghue's writing i am not sure i definitely didn't love this as much as i love the pull of the stars both of these this work and the pull of the stars talk about the historical treat uh treatment of medicine and of religion in ireland and there are overlaps and um, the young girl gets called a hysteric there are various things that are similar but I thought that The Pull of the Stars did it better by showing you how things happened without the commentary on how terrible this is. Um, and this had a lot more of that commentary. And I think because it was using an outsider's voice to try and show that, but it just felt a little too on the nose and heavy handed, as I've said, which isn't my favourite thing. Um, I did like the little girl. I did like the characters. I thought all the characters were very well drawn. I just wish that it had been paired back a little bit and given more space to the reader to uh, make come to their own conclusions and to understand the book more themselves. Um, there were some very, very beautiful passages and I loved the descriptions of Ireland and the um, way the mystery was wrapped up, I thought was pretty well done um, and made a lot of sense. And But there was something that happened in this book as well that obviously did happen and the way that people reacted felt very real but it did feel quite sudden and quite unexpected um so yeah whilst i did like this book and i did have a good time reading it i definitely have far more problems with it so i don't love it 
so to wrap everything up um i read this month this month i read the mothers by Britt bennett and i didn't like it as much as the vanishing half i thought that um there were too many similes and the writing was a little clunky and i also wasn't sure how it dealt with abortion was right um so i'm gonna give some star ratings i think just to give you some ideas so the vanishing half i gave four stars the mothers i think i would give three stars so not a bad book but um I feel ambivalent towards it. Then Fish Have No Feet by Jon Kalman Stephenson. I gave Summer Light and then Comes the Night five stars. I think I would give this three and a half stars. Um, but I still really want to read his uh, trilogy, which is historical in Iceland. I feel like maybe that would be more up my street. Um, this one had some fatphobia in. Um, I did like the way that it talked about masculinity. I thought that that was really well done. So maybe three and a half stars. I really like the way he writes. I absolutely love the way he writes. There is nothing clunky about it. I really adore it. But this one just um, felt a little more melancholy and didn't have the wit of the other one, which I preferred. Um, I also read, I also DNF'd um, The Girl of Ink and Stars by Kieran Melwood Hargrave because it was so much more uh, serious, heavy hitting, um, melancholy than I prefer my middle grade I want whimsy and it did not have any whimsy I read how to slowly kill yourself and others in America by Kay Lehman. I gave heavy five stars and it was my favorite nonfiction of last year this I would give three and a half stars again I can see a lot of the potential but for me it just didn't hit quite the same and then the wonder by Emma Donahue I would give three stars and I gave the pull of the stars four stars so uh this vlog hasn't grown quite to plan I thought this was going to be great and I was going to be reading a lot of books I love and instead I've just read a lot of books that I think are okay um which kind of makes sense of why I don't necessarily read a lot of an author's backlist um I've always thought that oh if I love an author I should read more of the books by them because um, other people do it other people have favorite authors they've read everything by them and um if I've loved an author why am I skipping their other books but it seems to me that I don't necessarily love everything by an author and that mm, my I feel like I've been really picky this year I don't think I've given out that many five stars and I don't really I haven't really found that many books that I absolutely love uh, I don't know if my reading tastes have changed or because I've been reading so much more I have missed out now the one thing that I haven't read that I was supposed to was Beneath the Lion's Gaze by Martin Mengiste. This vlog already went over so I didn't have space. Um, I'm still going to read this. This is one, this is a book that I own so all of the others were library books so it's a little easier for me since I own this one to read it later. I'm hoping that I will love this one um, as much as The Shadow King but who knows? Uh, let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on reading the backlist of an author. Have I just picked the wrong books? Or do you agree with me that just because you like one book of an author you won't necessarily love everything they've written and prefer to go for blurbs over uh, writers? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. And thank you for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you did, I'll put another video here that I think you might enjoy, as well as a button here to subscribe if you aren't subscribed already. I put out new videos twice a week, so I will see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.